What's up everyone? I hope all of you are doing fantastic. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video. I do apologize. I've been severely busy, just kind of really enjoying uh, the weather here in Toronto. It's been great this past few weeks and uh, of course the weeks prior to that as you guys can imagine were very difficult for everyone so getting some sunlight really being outside has been helping me staying inspired staying motivated and I recommend you guys also doing the same thing now for today's video we're talking about editing and I want to specifically break down the methods I use for editing on Lightroom when it comes to very iconic urban architectural buildings uh, the reason why I want to focus on that is because it's a very big portion of my portfolio and the type of content I produce online and it's always usually where I get the most feedback and the questions on what am I doing when I'm editing, how am I exporting and so on and so forth. So this video is really dedicated to showing you guys how I'm going to go and edit these images on Lightroom. But before we get into any of that, I just want to quickly take the opportunity to thank today's video sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people. You'll have the opportunity to explore new skills, really deepen your existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Many of their classes are designed for real life, so you're learning really practical and ready to use skill sets. These are very creative people and inspiring people who are on these platforms providing these classes and their classes are built upon their experiences and they're built upon their career in that specific field. So a lot of photographers on the platform are providing really, really useful information that you can really take advantage of. There are also so many great editing and post-production classes available on the platform. The content is all created specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow whatever your creativity takes you. The best part is that it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So you're really saving a lot of money by taking advantage of this opportunity. You'll be learning so much new information and paying very little for it. A good friend of mine by the name of Jamal Berger is actually on the platform and he provides really useful information on street photography. But a part of his main focus is also showing you guys his post-production process. So he breaks up how he goes about editing different images in the city that he's taken and shows you and really walks you through step-by-step -step process that he really explores where he talks about color, composition, you know, really understanding the focus and perspective when you're shooting and then when you're going into post-production and trying to match colors and really rearranging your images so that there's a consistency and flow amongst all of them. Jamal's classes are a few of the many different classes available on the platform. You have artists from all different fields on there and photographers that are showing you different editing techniques for portrait photography, landscape, cityscape, you name it. It's all on this platform and ready for you guys to explore. I highly recommend quality content like this for everyone. And thankfully, Skillshare is offering a two month free trial for their premium membership for the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description. This is the best way for you to explore your creativity, so don't miss out. All right guys, let's get into the editing process. So we have four different images we're gonna be working with. These are all iconic buildings in downtown Toronto, two of which I'm gonna really get into depth and show you the step-by-step -step process. The other two I'm just gonna quickly overview and do a time-lapse over so you guys can just kinda of see the process I would take. The first image we're gonna be working with is an old Gothic Revival building structure, uh, which is also called Daniel's Building. It's located at one Spadina Crescent. It is the Faculty of Architecture from University of Toronto's building, newly renovated building structure. Uh, the architecture school used to be located at a different place. They purchased, I believe, this building and renovated it. The back of the building is super cool, modern and innovative. The front is still the existing facade, this gothic, beautiful architectural piece. And I really want to get a nice perspective shot of it because the building structure is located in the center of the street. We're talking about like literally in the middle of Spadina and kind of the road curves around it. And I want to get as much of the image as possible of the structure itself. And it has a lot of natural landscaping around it. And I thought that would be a cool element to also incorporate. So let's get into editing of this particular photo. So here's the image. The very, very first thing I usually do with any picture that I take is make sure that's aligned and you can do that using the angle tool. This is a very easy manual way of doing it. After that, I'll make sure that the white balance is set correctly. This was a warm day, so I want the image to be really warm. Um, and the next thing is I try to create contrast. I do that by pumping up the contrast, pulling back the highlights, pumping up the shadows and bringing back the blacks. You start to see a lot more definition in the image. Another thing I usually do is pull back the clarity. I do this specifically because of the compression of images on social media. 
after which I will make sure that I go into the colors and play around with the hues. Here I want to kind of bring the image to life. I want to play around with split toning and make sure that there's some sort of contrast between the warmer and cooler tones. And then add some sharpness just to really give it more definition. Best part about this entire process is kind of just like test and kind of run as you go. I really try to understand the image and what you're trying to achieve with it. Once you've done all that, I usually then go back to my brush tools. The first thing is the gradual tool. Great option for creating gradients or, you know, really giving your image a vignette option. Uh, and you want your vignettes to look and appear real. So the best way to really put them in place is finding areas that are a little bit darker in the image to begin with. Uh, and after that, uh, the next thing I would usually do is just kind of tweak the image just to make sure that it still looks accordingly and then I didn't really make sure that I darkened too many parts of the image. And you can always go back with the brush tool and really bring back and emphasize the facade of the building. If you're taking a picture of a building, you can do that by, you know, playing around with the same tone dials that we were talking about earlier. Exposure here is very, very important. So you want to make sure you're constantly going back to exposure and controlling it. And then again with the colors, making sure that it's still kind of in lining with the vision that you have for the image. So once that's all done, uh, the next thing is you want to use the spot removal tool. This is a great tool for really cleaning up your image. Uh, any things that you want to you know, kind of remove from the image before you jump into Photoshop. This is where I make a lot of my changes. Uh, and we're talking about small little details. You're not going to remove the bigger items of your image. That's that's completely something I say for Photoshop. But these are just like small little things like the sign here on the, on the facade of that fence. Other things that I really do is uh, I go back to just making sure that again the image is polished um, and once you're done that you want to go to the tone curve you want to drop your points you want to play around with the shadows and make sure that you're not burning your shadows you're giving the image enough contrast while making sure that the highlights are matching accordingly your tone curve should be a nice gradual change it shouldn't be too drastic otherwise you're going to lose a lot of the detail once you're done that you want to export your image my export settings are pretty simple, quality is at 100 and then resolution is at 300 pixels per inch. You're going to export your image to your desktop and then after that, pop open uh, one of my favorite applications, Photoshop. In Photoshop, you're going to go back into the image and really clean it up. So in Photoshop, the idea is that you're going to go back into the image and really remove those things that you weren't able to um, in using Lightroom. So it allows you to recreate certain portions of the image. I'm just messing around right now, just really trying to clean up this fence. I, I think at one point I became super irritated uh, during this process because I was having a phone call while editing. Uh, but yeah, just take your time, be very patient with the image, and then the final results, you will be surprised. Photo number two is the Royal Ontario Museum, also known as the ROM. This is one of my favorite museums in Toronto and also considered one of the largest museums in North America. It has history, natural art, culture, you name it. It has spaces that kind of go over everything that you would want to discover. It's a perfect place to kind of get lost in and spend several hours looking at different art and it's beautiful. This image of it that I took, I want to kind of make it unique because a lot of people take pictures of the ROM uh, and from various different angles, but I saw that there was a podium where there was a tunnel created for, I guess, construction workers and I, I wanted to create a frame so I could take a picture of the architectural building with the frame around it and I managed to capture this photo. I'm going to show you guys how I would edit this particular shot. So let's get into it. The elegant and dynamic ROM. Uh, this building is super, super cool. Uh, and actually that day was super warm. So we're going to go warmer tones for the white balance. We're going to pump up that contrast again, pull in some exposure so that we can see the image itself, pull back the highlights pump up the shadows and bring back the blacks. You're creating a lot of contrast here and really helping to emphasize the architectural building and the dynamic characteristics of the building itself. We're gonna pull back the clarity and the reason we do that again is because when you post stuff on social media, it really kind of blends uh, in the image 
through the compression process and I don't like that. I like the image to look silky smooth and I've noticed over the years by pulling back the clarity it really helps emphasize the image a lot more. We're going to use the gradual tool here to again emphasize certain areas of the image um, and create those shadows that might not have existed but you know this is the art of editing. You have the ability to really manipulate the image itself and further uh, going further again you're going to change the colors and once you get to split toning, this is where the biggest part of the actual editing process happens because the key to split toning for me is if I'm going to have warmer or cooler highlights, I'm going to have the opposite for the shadows. So for this image, we're going to go cooler highlights and we're going to go warmer shadows. And this creates this beautiful, beautiful look in the image. Uh, sharpen it just a little bit so that you have the ability to see the details. Transform. The reason I went to actually transform the image here is because of the angles of the building really hard to figure out where the actual level is. Uh, but again, we have the angle tool and it's always a great option to utilize. And then the brush tool, the magic brush tool, you want to go through and really help emphasize certain parts of the image, you know, pump up the texture and the clarity on the facade, give it a lot more detail and resolution. And then it's just kind of tweaking and making sure that you like the before and afters, seeing whether or not you've done a drastic change or if it still looks natural. In this case, it still looks natural. It could be a nice sunset. You're going to drop your points on your tone curve. And again, you don't want to go too extreme on the tone curve like I just did there. You just want to go minimal. The reason why is because you want your tone curve to be as natural as possible. You don't want to burn your highlights and you don't want to make and you also want to make sure that you're keeping a lot of the detail and the contrast that you first did with the dials. Um, once you're done that, you can go back to tweaking the split toning if you want to really help get your image to where you want it. After that, what you want to do is just crop in the image and make sure that you have it at the angle that you like. Uh, these are all step-by-step -step processes that I take in editing any image. Now, of course, it varies depending on the actual building itself, but for this particular one, it's kind of just a lot of playing around and seeing what works and really creating that contrast between the darker and lighter areas of the image. Once you've done all that, you want to export your image and of course pump it into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, you're going to go in and you're going to tweak and remove all those little things that you didn't uh, obviously you, you might have missed in Lightroom um, and just polish the image and prepare it for social media or whatever um, outlet that you'll be utilizing it for. Here's the final image. Photo number three is the Gooderham building, the very iconic structure that everyone loves to photograph in Toronto. I wanted to play around with different angles of this structure because I've photographed it so many times before and I thought, hey, you know what, let's create uh, an opportunity with some of the landscaping here. So we went into the trees and I kind of captured this cool frame. So let's jump in and edit that quickly. Photo number four is City Hall, downtown Toronto. This is where I used to work actually at some point. Here I want to capture the building, but the building itself architecturally is interesting, but it is not the most picturesque of buildings in Toronto. And it's a very open space. So I thought, hey, you know, let's create an opportunity here and incorporate a subject to really display this building in a different light. Uh, hence why I got my friend Maori to walk right in front of the camera so I can photograph it and use his feet as a frame for the architectural building. Let's quickly edit this one as well.
you have it guys, my editing process for four different iconic buildings in downtown Toronto. I kind of really want to give you guys as, as much information as possible here, but of course it's difficult because I don't want this video to run for 40 minutes. But I do hope that you guys did enjoy and you took a lot of information from it. If you do have any questions, leave them down below. And as always, remember to subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys all very soon. Peace.